How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus with Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ, as always. Today is Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. This is the second video I'm recording from the previous video that I dropped for you is yesterday. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you, you get it. You get it. I was at work and there was this white guy, it was a white man, older, frail, looked like he was on the brink of pretty much dying. And we made eye contact, he looked at me and I discerned his spirit. And it wasn't a good thing, it was that he had that, you know, good old boy look that good old boy's spirit coming forth from him. You know, like, oh, you, you still a nigga. And I thought to myself, as I walked by him, it's like, it was like we were speaking without speaking. <laughs> it's like we were speaking without speaking. And in the spirit, I told him, what did I tell him? Let me make sure I remember it right. You too old for all that. You're too yeah, you you're too old to be racist. I literally said that in the spirit to him. You're too old to be racist. Now you see from the title of the video why white people shouldn't be racist. I work in a town that's predominantly white. And it has a high population of of elderly white people and retired white people with money. It's a it's a tourist town and a service industry town to service the people, the elderly, mostly white people that are retired and they have money. We ain't living in the same days as we were before <sighs> the slaves who is mostly us right even though the time that we're living in a lot of white people are slaves too they just don't realize it but they're they've been so indoctrinated that they think i'm a better slave than you because i'm white but we're both slaves. Yeah, but I get better food. I get better this and I get better that. But when it all falls down, these people are going to treat you the same way they treat us. They don't give a dang about you. We trying to get it out of here. Hey, you want to roll with us? Then you can roll with us. And some of them do. And you know, most, most don't, right? The reason that White people, I'm speaking to white people specifically today. But if you're black, whatever, you can get something from this. The reason why white people shouldn't be racist is because we all get old. You go, you are going to get old. And we know about the increase of, 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 of black people. We know about uh, the fear of, of white, white, you know, genocide. Uh, we know that white birth rate, the white birth rate is down. We we know this. We we've seen it. We've seen the numbers. We you see it in society. You see it however you want to see it. The rise of people of color, black people, assimilation. However, however it happens, and you know we multiply now. All them children that uh uh uh. Keisha, <laughs> I'm not speaking about you if you name Keisha, but uh, you know what I'm saying. And um, D Rock from the block <laughs> having one day them children gonna grow up, and they gonna have children, them, and now they are having children. We we know what's going on. So white people really cannot afford to be racist because 
the same mindset that you're, you're trying to hold on to is going to cost you dearly. One day you're going to be old, just like that man. He's old in comparison to me. And for a lot of you, I'm old. But one day, white man and white woman, you're going to get old. And you've grown up with this unrighteous racism. Now, if you're going to hate somebody, hate somebody because you got a reason to. There's a lot of uh, black people that I hate. I can't stand them. But I have a righteous reason to. But most of y'all, you're racist against black people for no reason because you was taught that. And then you come to the knowledge of the truth and then you still want to hold on to your racism because you're benefiting benefiting from it physically. Why are you trying to hold on to the spiritual? Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. But then the, the Bible tells you on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet to love the neighbor, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you are in Christ and I'm in Christ and I'm your neighbor. White man and white woman. And you have to stand up for, for truth and righteousness regardless. Who, who, who are you siding with? Are you siding with white people because they're white? I understand. Because I be wanting to side with my brothers. I ain't gonna, I be wanting to, oh, I, you, I see that there marching man. That's what I'm talking about. Cause I'm a, I'm a military man. You don't think that's exciting to see? Always exciting to see, especially in the society that we live in. This oppressive ass society. But I'm not getting involved in that. <laughs> Cause I know better. No, sir. You ain't even get me like that. I'm going to be obedient to my heavenly father and his word. He ain't told me to go over there. Now, if he told you to go over there, you go and do it. You go, you go, you go. I'm going to stay over here. Let me know how it works out for you. But who are you siding with? Ultimately, if you white and you in Christ, you truly born again, I'm rocking with you. I don't care what these, these other niggas talking about. I don't care if you are white and you are righteous because you in Christ, you is my brother. You more my brother, more my sister than them rebellious ones over there. Now, to the of course, fleshly, yeah, let me go talk to them. Let me, let me go speak the language. You, you stay over here because you know how they is. Let me go handle this. But you ain't got time to be straddling the fence. And you know, I told you, the fence that's being straddled isn't a fence. It's a great gulf. It's a great gulf. It's a pit of hell. Y'all trying to jump back in. Woo you? Woo you? Woo hoo! Woo man, you better. Man. And you see people falling in. Whoa, whoa, trying to jump over and jump back and forth. Whoa, won't God let you make it, you know what I'm saying, a few times just to show you. But most of y'all falling in now, and you still trying to go back and forth. Jump over. God give you some grace. You jump on the plane one time, you keep on knowing I'm, I'm just saying, man, come on now. Come on now, let's just be real here. Let's just be real. You can't afford to be racist because one day you're going to get old. And the very people that you've been racist toward, they mostly going to be the very ones that got to take care of you. Who you think run, runs the, the, the medical industry in regards to uh, not doctors and stuff, but, uh, you know, nurses and uh, certified assistants. I think that's the right term, probably the wrong term, but you know what I'm saying? It's black women. I be seeing them in, 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 in the store. It be the old white women, old white men that can't do nothing for themselves. And it be a nurse's assistant. That's most of the time black and a woman. And the stats show that. You can't afford to be racist. 
you're going to be racist all your life. And then the very people that you've been racist against is the very ones that are going to be wiping your dirty butt. Helping you to get around. You can't afford that. You can't afford that. But some of you still want to hold on to it. You still want to hold on to that to that racism. You want to be 70, 80 years old and want to be racist. Like, you really had the power to do, to do something. You were racist all these years. And what did it change? Where did it get you? You still got old and black people still multiply like rabbits. They still, as you said, took over. You carry that all these years for what? When you could have been doing something else with your life. You could have been putting yourself in a situation or a position to go get some real money where you're like, oh, I ain't got, I ain't have any niggas take care of me. I'm just being real. Y'all know I ain't politically correct sometimes. Once every year, maybe two or three times. <laughs> you can't afford to be racist, white man and white woman. Black folks ain't going nowhere. You should know that by now. One day you're going to get old. Black man and black woman, you can't afford to be racist. You know we definitely can't afford to get racist. We barely... <laughs> You, we don't got, let's say, a, a pot to piss in. You better go to Goodwill and buy you a pot. That's the time period we live in. Man, you ain't got a pot to piss in. Most of you don't because you won't even go buy a pot. Pots are pretty affordable now. Thought y'all supposed to be kings and queens and gods. That's okay. You're supposed to be able to make something out of nothing. Oh. Oh, he said something then. Let me put more. Let me, let me see. So y'all want to fight. I want to fight. See that? Yeah, these real right here. Real brass knuckles. These ain't the plastic one. This, these are real things. Since y'all want to fight, let's go hand-to-hand -hand combat. Spiritually, of course. <laughs> Spiritually, of course. Oh, you want to fight? Oh, you supposed to be pastor. Pastor talking about fighting and everything. He's saying nigga and stuff like that. Oh, my God. What type of pastor is he? <laughs> Oh, y'all be, be tripping. Y'all be tripping, man. That white man, I can see the hate in his eyes. Hate in his eyes. <laughs> he can't see. He can't see the love I got for him. You love the, you love the white man. You love the white man. I want to see the man saved. Why would I want somebody to go to hell if they have an opportunity for salvation? Now, make sure I... Lay it out plainly for you. Cause I know some of y'all gonna take that and you're gonna twist it. Why would I want that man to go to hell when he has an opportunity for salvation? My love is greater than the hate he can unrighteous hatred he can put toward me. But if he wants to continue in that, then hey, Anathema Maranatha, go ahead and go to hell. Cause that's where you want to go. That's where you want to go, then that's where you're going. And the fact that, you know, oh, I want the man to go. That's where you're that's where you're going. That's where you're going because that's where you want to go. So, hey, I ain't got nothing for you. I'm I'm over here. We li we live in a good life. We live in a Holy Spirit filled life. We live in a life of joy. We live in a life of true inner peace. We enjoying our family. We enjoying the portion the Lord has given us. So if you want to be racist and you want to be 70, 80 years old and you die and the black people still take over, then that's you. But it ain't going to change what is written. It's not. So my, my, my message to you is you need, you need to get that up off you. You need to get that up out your... You need to get it out your spirit. Because it's going to cost you. It's going to cost your family. And then your daughter or your son probably going to marry somebody black anyway. Oh. 
Oh. Oh my god, oh, I need a drink on that. I need a drink. Any, any is any wine in here? Your daughter <laughs> or your son probably gonna get some black meat anyway. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying then you're gonna be then you're gonna be mad. Then you're gonna be mad, then you're gonna be feeling something you're gonna be like, well, it is just a baby. It is, you know, it's just a baby. It's a cute little baby too. I'm just saying. No telling what your wife be thinking. Since they, you know, today they parade the black man around and everything. That ain't helping you. You want your wife to watch football, sports with you, to go see these great athletes and these muscles popping and you. That ain't helping, that ain't helping you. Especially if you ain't got it like that. Come on now, let's be real. I'm just being, I'm just, why, why do y'all, why y'all try to penalize me for being real, man? Y'all said that y'all wanted, y'all want a real pastor. That's what y'all said that y'all wanted. You're talking to God. You're saying, Lord, ain't no real pastors out here. The Christian church, they all fake. All the ones that claim to be Christian, all these pastors, they fake. They robbing the people, this and that, this and that. But when God rises us up, oh, we don't want him. We don't want her. Hey, what we gonna what we gonna do with y'all? I know what we gonna do with y'all. Let me see what the word what, the word said. You gonna go to hell because you don't want the truth. It doesn't matter if a person is black. It doesn't matter if a person is white. You don't want the truth. The message is what speaks. The message is spiritual. That's why. A lot of us, when we, when our ancestors, when I say we, our ancestors and everything, when we was in captivity and they spoke the word, it spoke to us because the word is spiritual. Why did they do Islam? Why did they do Hinduism? Why didn't? Because the words that speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And therefore, when the slave masters thought they we're gonna use the Bible to you know to keep these niggas enslaved, they actually was empowering us because they was doing according to the will of God, because the word is spiritual. And we let me calm down. I get turned up, man, when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to truth. This ain't no show. Y'all should know this by now. This is how I am. I'm going to put a little comedy in here for y'all. All I know is how to be real. And what I really know is that unrighteous racism, whether you are black or white, one day you're going to get old. And the very people you hate on, it's going to be somebody younger than you. Rather they are black or white, and they want to, they can go, they can go across your head, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's real talk right there. That man was 70, 80 years old. I could have bopped that man and barely touched him and sent him to the hell he probably came from. Now it would have cost me dearly. Of course, I ain't gonna do that, but if I wanted to, ain't nothing he could have did about it. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell y'all a story. I'm going to let y'all go. I was going to save it for another video, but I think this is the perfect video to put it in. But let me make sure I say that one more time. Y'all got this racism in your heart. One day, you're going to get old. And one day, you're going to die. That's the point I want to make up with all this. One day, you're going to die. One day, we are going to die. One day, I'm going to be preaching, and then I'm going to be like, trying to preach like this. I'm <coughs> I'm going to get old. And then I'm going to die one day. But what am I dying with? Am I dying with unrighteous racism? Am I dying with unrighteous hatred? Or am I dying with love? And righteous judgment? And peace? Inner peace? No matter what a person does to me on a daily basis, how they look at me every single day. Like I'm the scum of the earth. 
every day I deal with that as a black man here in America. And yet I still rise up above it as a king, the king that I am in Christ. And that's something that they can't give, nor can they take. Rather they be white or black. But you know, I deal with mostly white people because of where I live at. And it doesn't matter if I live here or not, that's just the way it is here in America. We know that, and around the world. <sighs> Keep on playing with them young, young, young bucks. They gonna bop one of y'all. <laughs> they gonna bop one of y'all. And then whatever racism is gonna get you. You still gonna be racist with a knotted up, knotty head. Let me tell you the story. I'm, I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> Oh, it's a true, it's, oh, as God is my witness, this is a true story. I was at work. It was several of us on the aisle working, doing stop, you know, adjusting stuff like that. I was on one side. There was a, a lady that's on my team. Her name is Lisa. She's white. She was on the other side. We were having some conversations back and forth, boom, 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 nothing crazy. And then Denise, she, she, I should say, yeah, she walks up, she rolls up because she had a cart. And what Denise does is when you go in Walmart, you see the people getting the groceries and stuff for people to pick up and deliver and stuff like that. She does that. Denise is an older black woman. We're all in the aisle. Denise comes up, hey, boom, boom, we have a conversation, blase, blase. A white lady walks up to Denise and asks for help. She's looking for something. She was looking for a uh, Frenchy onion, crispy, you know, the crispy onion, fried onions, which, you know, they're, they're pretty good. I'm right there by the crispy onions so denise is looking like and i'm like oh yeah they, they're right here i'm literally i'm literally looking at them they're 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 right here ma'am oh so she comes around denise she walks over by me so she can get to the crispy onions and then she says give me three of them almost lost my job the way she said it she literally said give me three of them nigga she said it with the mindset of like she was the the master's wife and I was the house nigga slave. That's how she said it. As God is my witness. I like I froze for a second because I looked at it. And I said, what in my mind I said, what you just say to me? <laughs> for a split second. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. I almost lost my job, y'all. Cause the way she said it. So it happened so fast. I'm like, I, I looked at her like, who the hell you think you talking to? I should say, who the heaven you think you talking to? But who in the hell? Because where you obviously must come from talking crazy like that. For a split second. After that split second, I look at, I'm looking at Denise. Denise looking at me and we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all know how it is amongst, amongst black people. You ain't got to say no. I'm looking like, she's going to be like, oh, no, she didn't. I'm looking like, oh, no, she didn't. Like, did this really just happen? This is just really just happened. We look at each other like, what? What? I'm looking around like, this can't be, this got to be a movie. I must be being pumped. Even though, I, you know, I know this is real. I know I be telling these stories, y'all, but I don't go to work looking, oh, somebody's going to be racist toward me. I'm not studying that for real. I'm... <laughs> trying to go to work, do my job, and get home to my family and make these videos. I don't be studying how the people that be in uh in 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 the store. I wish the best for them and everything, but I'm not I'm not I'm not with all that. I'm not I'm not with all that. If I'm a, if I'm if I don't like somebody, I don't like somebody. If I hate somebody, I hate them, and I'm gonna have a legit reason to hate them as the bible says i know y'all been taught you ain't allowed to hate but we got sermons on that go check it out or you can just go 
Look it up yourself. Now, remember, Lisa, the other white lady, she's across the aisle. I'm right here. Lisa's over here. She's across the other aisle. She's working. Now, she's on the, you know, the, the ladder cart. Little thing you see in Walmart, they call it ladder cart. She's up there, and she's at the top. She's pulling stuff down, boom, boom, boom. I ain't never had no problems with Lisa to this day since, I, since I've been working. Lisa, she cool. Lisa, Lisa cool. She cool. I don't know what she believed, but she cool. Me and Denise, the older black woman, we're talking. I mean, we're talking in your know, black code, like, hey, I guess we back in the plantation and stuff, and this, and that, this, and that. And then Lisa said some, and uh, I forgot what she said, but I was like, I said, oh, you, I said, did you hear her? And she was like, yeah, I heard her. She was like, that was crazy. She said, I forgot what she said out there, but she was like, she was she was shocked that the lady had said that. She yeah, she I remember what she said. Now she said, she said, uh, <laughs> she said, well, she could at least say it, please. Now, what does Lisa really feel? I don't know, but Lisa, you know what I'm saying? I ain't had no problem with Lisa so far. I ain't had no problem with Lisa so far. Now she, hey, that was wrong, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna side my people. Maybe she is like that. I don't know, but even Lisa, she heard it and everything and was like, dang, she could have at least said, please. I'm like, yes, yeah, the way she said it was like, you know, and I was like, you know, I didn't say it to Lisa because I, you know, I don't know about Lisa in that regard. And you could tell she like knew what was up. She knew what was up. And then I said something like, yeah, you know, in 2022, we still got to deal with, deal with stuff like this. Like we on the plantation even though we know that we technically are. And then that was that. That was that. Like I said, I'm cool with Lisa. I be putting Lisa up on different opportunities, you know, different, um, you know, entrepreneur stuff and everything. Uh, we be talking about real estate and stuff like that. You know, I mean, that that's just me, y'all. That That's just me. Some of you, may, you may not be like that. Oh, you're talking to the white man, the white woman, uh, this, this and that. Look, I'm not afraid to tell people stuff because it's not going to change who I am. It's not going to it's not going to stop the opportunities and the things that God has for me. Me telling her different things and me speaking to her is not going to stop me from being the king that I am in Christ. I don't know about you. Maybe it is, which is why you be so afraid around white people or you be so afraid around black people. If you are who you really say you are, then how can somebody else change that? It's like Somebody coming in trying to change me and say I'm not a man. They can do that with other people, but they can't do it with me. Because I know what I am. True story. True story. Where is that going to get her? Maybe she had a moment. I don't know. Maybe it was a, maybe it was a spirit that was trying to provoke me. Maybe it was a, it was a test. Maybe it was all the above. But as you see right now, I'm laughing about it. I'm laughing about it. That's one story I can laugh about because that doesn't, I mean, it bothered me, but it didn't really bother me. And even if it does bother me, I get over it. I get over it. Um, you know, the, the thing that does tick me off, you talking about go from zero to 38, as we say, the alarm thing. I hate car alarms. I've, grown to hate them because of white people. Oh, let me oh, my, my, lock my car 30,000 times because the big black man with the big beard is going to, he might steal something. But then the Lord showed me like, that's power right there. That's power. Not necessarily, uh, or I should say, not specifically afraid of your skin color. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Even though it still upsets me, though, it still it still upsets me because a lot it's like I'm not trying to steal nothing you you got. And most black people are not walking around and saying, "Yeah, I'm trying to steal something." They get into that because society promotes that. Society wants black people to do these different things. I'm not gonna go down that that trail. You already know what's up. You are you already know what's up. We ain't gotta go there right now. But um 
regardless if you are what we call black or white, regardless if you are racist and you are black or white, I know people say you can't be racist if you're black because black, I mean, because racism deals with economic power, blah, 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 blah. You're only telling part of the story. You're only telling part of the definition. Let's just be real. Um, we all have to face judgment. We all have to face judgment. The whole thing about you can only be, if you're black, you can't be racist because racism deals with, you know, taking economic power from somebody and everything. That's a bunch of bull job to me. You know why? Because it's a bunch of bull job excuses. I'm a living example. So you're telling me that you worship God or you worship whatever you worship that you say is supreme and you can't overcome what they're doing to you, but you say your God is supreme? You say you're a king, you say you're a queen, you say you're a God, but you can't overcome that? That's why I don't buy that bull job. It's another way to give our people excuses. And that's why, part of the reason why we don't never rise up because we always got an excuse for something. We always got an excuse instead of being like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, I, I ain't studying that. Let me do what I need to do. Hopefully, let me do what I need to do in Christ. Because one day, one day, we all going to die. One day, Lord willing, I'm going to get old. I'm still going to be preaching. And then you're going to find out Brother King has died. And I will have to give an account. And so, for each and every one of you that's listening to this video right now, rather you listening, but well, obviously if, you, if you're not listening, then you're not listening. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm speaking spiritually. Rather a person is literally listening to what I'm saying or uh, spiritually the word is going out there. They will still have to give an account for what they've done in this body. With that being said, God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated. Not debated, it is declared.